<laughs> Welcome, everybody, to another edition of the Rewind Sports 60. We're streaming live on Facebook, broadcasting from the Alusha Studios of WCPT 828 AM in the beautiful, beautiful city of Chicago in the great neighborhood of Jefferson Park. This is another edition of the Rewind Sports 60. It's yours truly, Jerry Riles. This is the fastest hour in sports conversation. And, of course, ladies and gentlemen, you love them. He's not over at Wrigley Field. He's not on the rooftops over there. He's not at Comiskey Park or the Guarantee Ray Field. He's not. No. He's in studios, ladies and gentlemen. You love him. And before we're out of here, no question about it, I'm sure we're going to get an opportunity to hear his point of view as far as high school football is concerned being pushed to the spring. March, ladies and March. gentlemen, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, he is the one. He's the only. He's the marvelous one. He's Dan Marvel. Yeah. What's up, Marvel? How, How are you doing? Buddy? It's nice and wet today. Hey, take well, it easy. <laughs> outside. And, uh, you know, I actually enjoyed the Blackhawks game yesterday. You know, they won a game in Edmonton. It was pretty cool. And the Cubs just won a game. So things are underway. I'm just, you know, the, <laughs> the, the, the Marlins and the Phillies, I mean, it looks like it's going the way we thought where it's going to be tough to finish the season but we shall see yeah we shall certainly see and you know what it's interesting we'll get an opportunity to talk major league baseball if you want to join in our number here 773-763-9278-773-763 wcpt the fastest hour in sports conversation yours truly jerry riles and of course the marvelous one lauren cox is in route hey let me say <laughs> this let me say this lauren drive safely i know you're certainly listening to us as you're driving in uh, from the downtown Chicago land area, the beautiful city of Chicago. But, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to be safe. I want you to be careful out there. Of course, the marvelous one wants to uh, uh, make sure you guys all and girls stay in one piece. But, you know, the Cubs were able to get the uh, conclusion of the game. Man, there was a short rain delay over at the friendly confines, and they were finally able to get the uh, the game completed, and they come away with a, a victory. A sweep. They, they come away with a, a, a victory, so that was uh, very good. But uh, as I was driving in, Marvelous, and I'm sure you experienced it as well, yeah. the rains were coming down. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. They had a rain delay of one hour and two or two minutes, I believe. And uh, they were able to complete the game with a funky second base uh, runner in the extra innings. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I'm still not uh, used to or yeah. comfortable with that. Well, I mean, I know on the radio, uh, Hughes, uh, Pat Hughes was st struggling with how to do a scorebook. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm sure there are a lot of people who are struggling on how to, you know, uh, I guess do their scorecard yeah, because well, it's, 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 it's uh, you know, it's just different. Sure. There's no question yeah. about it. And for purists, baseball purists out there, yeah, I mean, you know, you, you, you want things to remain, you know, normal and yeah. want things to remain the same. But unfortunately, everything is affected by this right. pandemic, this COVID-19. But right. I do have to say this, man. The rain was coming down. Now, I, I, I went to church today. I'm a, a, a practicing right. Catholic, and I, I went over to St. Joseph the Worker. We stream on Facebook and YouTube. So if, if you're a Catholic and you miss Mass, you want to go to St. Joseph the Worker in Wheeling or YouTube page or the Facebook page, you certainly can check out today's Mass. But went out to, to breakfast with the family and everything over at Granny's in there, over in Wheeling. And then, you know, I went home and started preparing for the show and making calls and doing everything, you know, uh, getting ready for the show so i'm sitting out on the deck and i got the computer going i got my 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 my, my phone i i got everything you know placed and got my tea and everything sun was shining and suddenly it started to sprinkle so i take all of my belongings inside and then lo and behold the sun came back out and i'm sitting out there enjoying everything white Sox, congratulations to the white Sox with the sweep over the kansas city royals uh this weekend great performance by the boys and i tell you those bats are coming alive they are hot and they are coming alive yeah. but uh, suddenly the rain the clouds open up and the rain came down man it's just flood no marvelous yeah. <laughs> Here, here's the disappointing thing here's the bad thing when i'm driving home from breakfast at granny's over there mm -hmm. in wheeling i got the sunroof up because it's hot and the sun is on you know what i mean hey i'm you know it's sunday nice and easy getting ready I'm, I'm pumped up i'm all good easy like sunday morning easy like sunday morning well <laughs> that was only for a short spell because the uh, rain spell came in i parked the car outside on the uh street Normally, I put it in the garage. I had it on the street there, Marvelous, with the sunroof open. The rain came down. I know, I know the punchline. 
<laughs> Another punchline. And I, I forgot, silly me. I'm so, you know, and I'm just yeah. enjoying the beautiful weather. And, of course, the rain came yeah. down. So I'm, I'm panicking, getting on my, my computer and everything in the house. I forget that the sunroof mm -hmm. is open. <laughs> so, so I get ready to leave. Mm -hmm. I go, oh, my God. It's coming down in buckets. I go, oh, my God. My sunroof is open. Yeah. My daughter goes, I love her to death. My daughter's sitting there. She goes, oh, yeah, I saw the sunroof open. I go, what? <laughs> <laughs> I go, are you kidding me? Yeah. I go, I love you, Teresa. You're the best. I love you. I go, but when you see something, you got to say something. She goes, well, I, I went yeah. to sleep. <laughs> Dang it. She's, hey. You probably need an interior car wash anyway. Well, thank goodness I got the leather <laughs> interior and I got the cloth and everything, so I wiped everything down and it was all good. But she went to sleep. I go, hey, Teresa, come on now. If it's your car, I, I guarantee you wouldn't rain. She <laughs> said, well, hey, you know, it's, it's not a big deal to me. But, yeah. So uh, we made it in. We're all good. Talk about we made it in and we're all good. It's good yeah. to see her lovely, her talented, her beautiful face and her well, i think she might have a little bit an extra edge <laughs> for the show but ladies and gentlemen she's in studio she's the one she's the only you love her she's the fabulous lauren cox what's up lauren how are you i'm good it was a, a rainy drive in that's for sure it was like flooding downtown so i'm like really why is it this much flooding for <laughs> not that much rain it was bizarre no, it was a lot of rain. Well, oh, yeah, it was. But it, I mean, yeah, it was a lot of rain. Yeah, it came down. Yeah, but it's not yeah. like it's been raining all day. Yeah, I thought I, hey, I thought I needed a canoe to clean out my car. But <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, it was. I was like, oh yeah, yeah. But the good thing is, the the lawn got watered. <laughs> right. And the flowers, yeah, well, and yeah, yeah everything got watered, right? <laughs> you know. And they they say this upcoming week it's going to be the temperatures are going to be pleasant in the lower to mid seventies. Okay, That's with some nice. rain. So, you know, yeah. it's, it, it, that's good, Marvelous. But how are yeah. you doing, Lauren? Good. Staying corona-free. Yeah. Um, happy that sports are back, yeah. and it's just so much going on Yeah, with sports. Yeah, it's certainly a lot just going on. I didn't, yes. you know, I, it, it's about I, time. <laughs> it, it is about time because, I, you know, it's just comfortable, and it's really, really cool just to sit back and, and watch a Cub game, watch a Sox game, watch the NBA games unfold. Yeah. Uh, you know, even a little, bit of, a little bit of the WNBA, but it's just. Why are you always so shady towards the WNBA? <laughs> Why do you do that? I'm not a big fan. Just don't even say that. Why? We don't even want to hear you say that you're not a big fan. Like, we, why? No. Wait a minute. We're I mean, getting behind the Lauren, WNBA. You know our, you know our motto. So <laughs> real sports, real talk, just plain real. And we're being real here. The W. Those girls can play. Did you see one of the players got into it with um, Andre Iguodala? Did you see that? I did not see that. Yeah. Um, Paint a picture for us, Lauren so Cox. basically, he said 23 was nice as opposed to her name and you know her name was powers i believe and she just went off on him basically and said i got a name and this is why you know we're not respected at the WNBA. and you know i'm paraphrasing a bit but anyway they started to put andre's past posts where he said he didn't want his daughter playing for the WNBA because he didn't want her to be a lesbian. Ooh. So, you know, you know why would he, why would he say, why, 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 why would he say something like that? Good question. Keep it real, keep it real sports. Why would he say something? 773-763 WCTT if you got an answer. I. Yeah, he said that. So then, you know, they brought that back up and he he couldn't win that battle after that. Can you pull up that on your computer there, Marvelous One? So Andre Iguodala said, he said, I don't want my daughter playing in the WNBA because there's too many lesbians. And he doesn't want her to be a lesbian. Yeah. Wow. That's what he said. Wow. Okay. Very interesting. That's very, very interesting, especially with everything that's going on as far as equality and, and, and you know, uh, social injustice and uh, systemic racism you, you, and, and, and everything that the NBA, uh, the NBA and WNBA have done. Adam Silver is doing a fabulous job of trying to bring unity together. Yes. And it's really interesting that a player is speaking out against a fellow, uh, and I use the word loosely, but a, 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 somewhat of a colleague, a partner in this big brand as far as the NBA is concerned. Because the NBA and Adam Silver is really, um, the changes that they've made over the past year, especially prior to the pandemic, is phenomenal 
regarding elevating the WNBA to a more respectable league and uh, equality for the women and the players. Yes. And the, as far as pay is concerned, as far as paternity leave is concerned, mm -hmm. I mean, the NBA and Adam Silver has done a fantastic job of trying to bridge the gap, even before the pandemic. So you would expect and think at the end of the day, and I understand Andre Iguodala's position and his concern, but sometimes you just keep things to yourself, okay? You just keep things to yourself. <laughs> Say it again. And it's, uh. it's, it's a matter of you, you, you working together to build a brand. Because at the end of the day, it is a livelihood for these women. Yes. Just like it is for the men. It's a, it's, it's a livelihood. And despite how you may feel about it, you, you've got to, res I would imagine, you would have to respect it and support it. Yeah. Even if you don't necessarily agree with it. Because at the end of the day, again, it's it's a Why matter of these. Why would you agree with it? Because he doesn't. There are okay. people. Uh, there are people. <laughs> well, no, I'm not got, saying him. I thought you were saying in terms yeah, of the WNBA. Yeah, this, actually, he's made that comment in 2016. Uh, is what I'm finding. You know, yeah, the, the comment. Yeah, it was yeah. a while ago. He, and at the time, he had a six-year-old daughter, and he tried to clarify it a bit. By um, you know, but uh, he it's it's a it's a four year old quote. That's why I couldn't find it right away. No, I, I mean it. It's so this is what it was: former Spartan, current WNBA star Ariel Powers to Andre Iguodala. Put some respect on my name because <laughs> he he tweeted number twenty three from the Mystics is nice. She told him, put some respect, that was the tweet that he tweeted out. She Ariel responded and said, put some respect on my name or keep this tweet to yourself. And then. But what, oh, what, what, what was, what was so, what was so. Well, you know, the WNBA, they are. She had an attitude. I mean, just no, a, but they're just tired of being disrespected. They're, yeah, but you she know, said number 23 is pretty good. It, it but they said if it was, she was saying that if it was male sports, they would have known his name. That's not true. That's well, not that, true. That's, that's how she felt. Well, I think she needs and, to. And I think his past has a lot to do with it. It may have a lot to do with it, but I, I, mean, I think, you know, here's the thing. Regardless of whatever profession so you're honestly, in. So, honestly, that, I mean, but that's what it is. It's the past. Like, he's got a history of saying inappropriate, foul stuff. So then when he tweeted that out, what you think now? Oh, let's give him the benefit of the doubt. No, he, he's got a history of saying foul stuff. He fouled. But it's it's And that's when she, that's why she called him no, out. No, no, she's gotta she's gotta relax. <laughs> she's honestly she's gotta relax. In my opinion. Because Lauren, you're what talking he about said the, was wrong. Uh, was it? Yeah, that was wrong. He just said, said number he just said No, no, I'm saying his previous comments. From okay. four years ago. Marcus, yeah. what yeah. do you think? He still said it. <laughs> From four years ago, I mean obviously that comment is uh is no good, but number twenty three is nice of the mystics. I mean <laughs> <laughs> it's like he doesn't know her name. I guess is the point that uh, that uh, he's disrespecting her. But I obviously had no respect for the players to begin with four years ago. So <laughs> so nothing's changed. Yeah, here's the deal. More, I, I, I don't know. I don't care if you're talking about the uh, the, the the players in the NBA. If you're play, talking about players uh, in the playground, and no, a lot of people. And you you can look at the ratings as far as the WNBA is concerned. Not too many people pay too much attention to the WNBA. Mm -hmm. Four years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, not many people paid much attention to the WNBA uh, because the word on the street really is the fact that a lot of people don't want to, after you're watching the most elite athletes in the world playing above the rim, when you talk about the NBA, most people on the street, when you ask them, don't want to see a bunch of women running around playing below the rim. Mm hmm that's the that's the that's that's oh. the perspective and that's that's the truth on the streets mm -hmm. and you know this. Yeah, but uh, you know this. Nobody you wants to see a woman here, here running up and down this here, court. Here, do your daughters play? Do your daughters play basketball? No, they did not. Okay, mine did. So I have a little different perspective, I guess, mm -hmm. because I didn't. I thought you know it was you don't see you know the post play and, and everything else that you see in the men's game, but yeah, I, I, I got to enjoy it obviously following my daughter. So uh, I have a little bit <laughs> more listen, appreciation. Maybe listen, I love women sport. I, I, at one time, said my 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 daughters were in gymnastics, mm -hmm. right? Since they were like you know little girls, six years old, they love it. We I had no I mean I knew about gymnastics, but not as much as I knew about you know the the main sports, basketball, football, you know whatever. But I I learned to love the sport because they were involved. Uh, 
basketball, I respect women in anything they do. I say, hey, listen, I wish that if I come back in my second life, that I could be a 12-year-old girl, the gymnast. Because the things that they do, it's phenomenal. It's unbelievable. <laughs> and somebody oh said, Jerry, why, why would you want to come back to be a 12-year-old boy? <laughs> I, go, right. I go, because women gymnasts, and they, it's, it's un, to me, yeah. it's speechless what they're capable of yeah. doing. And Simone Biles? God bless her. Yeah. Oh my God! And you would have seen all She's that. She's an alien. And you would have seen all that in Tokyo, under other circumstances. <laughs> Simone now. Biles is she's she's an alien. Yeah. Yeah. I can't I can't even comprehend how she's able to do what she's capable of doing in such a controlled yeah. manner. It's she's it's it's just out. it's it. Listen, I love Michael Jordan. Everyone knows that. Simone Biles, in my opinion, as an athlete, she's got him beat. I said she she's got on beat. She is unbelievable. So I said, hey, you know what? I, if I come back in my second life, I want to be a 12-year-old girl. Okay, and be able to, a 12-year-old, yeah. not a 12-year-old girl, a 12-year-old female gymnast. Yeah, but then okay. you'll have to go through the teen years. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, marvelous, marvelous. I just want to be a gymnast. Okay, I want to okay. be a 12-year-old gym, okay, okay. female gymnast. Because the things that the women do, and no offense to the male gymnasts, yeah. they, they, they're phenomenal in what they do as well. The, the, the pummel horse and the rings. Are, I, mean, I mean, my arms are big as they are, you know. Without doing that, just imagine, <laughs> Laura. Just imagine if I was really doing it. Oh my God! But women, female gymnasts, they are they are they're they're unbelievable athletes. Uh, I dated a a basketball player back in my younger years, and I I respect women playing basketball because this it's a skill set that is. I mean, to reach that level, you have to be very very good and very very talented. But as far as mainstream America is concerned. And on the playgrounds, most guys, most people don't want to see women at the highest level. They don't want to watch them play basketball because most guys say, hey, I can do half the things that they're doing, which isn't true. But that's the perceptive perception. No, yeah. that's ridiculous. I mean, <laughs> you guys have to people are starting to tune in more and the NBA is definitely understanding their part. You see a lot of the players had on the. Orange shirts, bringing aware orange sweat shorts, shirts, bringing awareness to the WNBA, mm -hmm. and you know, you have your new stars that are coming along. I, I mean, I definitely think that. But most people don't even know who the stars are on the WNBA. Well, really, marvelous. Del 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 yeah, yeah, is, is, is well known. I think yeah, that's one. <laughs> and she's out. Sabrina's Gr out for Gr her. Gr Gr Griner on. is known too. I think, <laughs> among among others, but the, you know, you know, that's Del the point. <laughs> That's the point. So you don't think it's starting to get more no. interest? No. Oh, come on, Jerry. I'm just being honest. Yes, we're talking about it. Hey, we talk about it every week, whether you want to or not. So I think yeah. we are starting to get more. No, yeah. nobody. I, I, nobody. Yeah, we're talking. Hey. Listen, I'm glad you brought it up. Yes, <laughs> I will continue to bring it up. Well, just take it easy. <laughs> 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 Just take it easy. <laughs> See, but your job, what your as far as your perspective on, let's go to the men now. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Let's go. Marvelous. Yes. Let's talk about the the men. The no men? offense to the, the women. Okay. Right. Thank you. I love women. Yeah. I think you well, guys are fantastic. I'm sure I'll, you I'll, do. Well, I'll tell you what I what I, the NBA as it is this week looks to me like the. Uh, like the Proviso West Holiday Tournament or something, you know, all in one site, which is kind of with no fans. And uh, so it's it's not the same thing, obviously. And what they've done is they have the standings as it was, mm. and each team's going to play about eight games. It's not going to change the standings much. It's still going to Milwaukee, Boston, Toronto, L.A., Clippers, da uh, Lakers at the end of it. So, uh, I, you know, they're doing the best they can with an impossible situation in all the sports, actually. It'll, and I say, it will be amazing if any of them get to the conclusion. <laughs> but the ones <laughs> in a bubble have a better chance. It looks right. like baseball made a mistake by not doing the Florida-Arizona plan. Well, you know, where they would have been all you know, in one place. Yep. In the spring training sites. Right. That, that, it, it, but the, the sidebar yeah, to that, right. the one reason why they didn't do it is the fact that these players are going to be tied up in, in, in Arizona. And we see exactly yeah. what's happening with the numbers as far as COVID is concerned yeah. in Arizona. They're right. shooting out the well, roof. Flo Flo but, Florida, Florida, too. Florida is yeah. where the NB and WNBA is. So. Well, they're in, a, they're in a bubble, though. Yeah, that's what I mean. They, they could do, it, do a bubble in Arizona how would they, and Florida. Well, how... how it, I, I, I don't... <laughs> 
I don't know how they, I mean, and, and that's not the problem. Yeah. The bubble is really not the problem. It's what these players, and it's, it's suspect in the first place uh -huh. as far as baseball is concerned because, you know, you go, you go home, mm -hmm. and who knows whoever you come in contact with, whether it's your well, wife, your girlfriend. They're blaming the Marlins. Right. They're like, the Marlins well, are a, destroying the whole city. That's the thing. In Arizona, actually, the spring training sites, if they went to their own sites, right. they're all in Phoenix, Scottsdale, whatever. It's all pretty close. So that would have worked. Florida would have been a bigger problem because the Florida spring training sites are more spread out. Right. All the way from the East Coast, Miami, the West Coast, Tampa. So that wouldn't have worked as well. But it looks as though this is... You know, the travel is the problem. I mean, they contaminated the Philadelphia clubhouse, and so nobody can play there for a week, and it's a, it's already a big mess. <laughs> so, uh, Rob Manford, the commissioner from Major League Baseball, issued a, uh, a, a comment or a statement last, either Thursday or Friday, and said, you know, if these numbers continue to escalate tomorrow, meaning Monday, yeah. He's going to shut everything down. Yeah, I mean, the Cubs are supposed to play in St. Louis next week, and they're already talking about that being in jeopardy because the Cardinals have, a, have some uh, COVID. And I think I think that everyone should have listened to Buster Olney, yeah. right? He said, hey, listen, it has a 5% chance of starting, 0% <laughs> chance of concluding. <laughs> and it seems like he's accurate because a week, more, what, is it a week and a half, two weeks now? Yeah, just Barely. a week ago Friday. Little, yeah, Thursday. a little over yeah. a week. Yeah, and so... And so it's it's getting out of hand, and the unfortunate thing about this is the fact that you're asking twenty something year old well paid athlete to abide by rules. What's the one that didn't show up today, Seth? Well, I mean, Kane is uh, in Milwaukee is quick. Yeah, yes. yeah, 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 he just yeah. he just said I'm not coming back. Right, exactly, and that's the problem is the fact that you don't know Who what these that? players are doing. Well, I mean, and then they release a statement. We can't find them. Right, I'm exactly. Like, are you kidding me? Exactly. But this the the the, the point of the matter is the fact that you don't you can't control these players when they leave the ballpark. No, that's, that's the problem. Why they can't leave, and and that's the difference with the with the NBA is the fact that they're in a bubble okay. and they can't leave. So you you have some type of control as far as their movement with these Hello? ball players, and hence you see why the numbers are are uh, are escalating and and spiking. Yeah. Hence the Marlins yeah, yeah. and spreading around the league is the fact that these players you tell them what to do when they get to the ballpark and how they conduct themselves inside the ballpark during the game, and they're not even following protocol when it, as far as the games That's are concerned. That's what I was gonna say. They said Manfred basically was blaming them and telling them to stop spitting and this <laughs> and that, and I'm like, um. That's your solution to this? Well, that's part of it. I think Ian Happ with the Cubs said, hey, one way that we can control this, and it's what uh, our great mayor of, of Chicago, uh, Lori Lightfoot, and, of course, the governor said, put the mask on. We got the Rewind Sports 60 mask for hmm. you. Just check it out. We'll send it out to you. <laughs> but the point is, uh, Ian Happ said, hey, you know what? Wear your mask. Practice the social distancing as best as you possibly can and do what you're expected. Wash your hands in the whole nine yards. Stop spitting. But... After he made that statement, you've seen some of the players around the league in the field with a mask on. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think there are a couple of Pittsburgh yeah. Pirate players with their mask on. There's some other players around the league wearing their mask or whatever because they simply just don't know. But mm -hmm. many of these players, were they figure, hey, we're in our comfort zone as far as playing, mm -hmm. you know, in the ballpark. And so we, I mean, it's business as usual. Oh, boy. I, I, yeah, there was not. one network, well, the Marquee Network. They showed Anthony Rizzo when he came back. They showed a close-up of him, mm -hmm. and they showed him spitting. Yeah, and I, I pointed to the television. I'm like, he's not supposed to be no. doing that. I mean, at, at home plate, you got the catcher, the umpire, and the batter. For example, that's really close contact, I'd say. And then the players at the bases and whatnot. But there was one time that I think the bubble didn't work, and that was for Lou Williams. But we won't. Get uh oh, <laughs> yeah, we got a report. The stripper Aries <laughs> said she did get a dance. She gave a oh, dance. Oh, he got a dance. Lou. Yep. Lou Williams in the house. He got a left dance. She said he was an excellent tipper too. <laughs> Ridiculous. <laughs> really ridiculous. We don't condone that type of behavior here in the Rewind Sports 60. Fail. But, <laughs> hey, look, I told you this. And Stephen A. Smith said the same thing. There's no way. And I, 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 love, my, I love my brothers. I love. But in the NBA, them cats, they're not staying. <laughs> No, it's not so happening. Far, so good. Hey, Lauren, there's two things they're going to be doing. One way, somehow, they're going to be smoking the weed. <laughs> they're going to do it. And they're going to find them a little extracurricular activity. Okay. Some way, somehow, they're going to do it. 
You can't expect them to be locked up for two, three months That's and say, so hey, funny. you can't have no women and you can't have smoke. You can't it's smoke that two stuff. two months, almost. Yeah. It's not we, three. Listen, well, if they go. If they go a to few, the championship. A few people. Hey, Lauren. A few people. Lauren. I'm here he to should know better. Listen, Lauren, I'm here to He's tell you. He's not 22. Lauren, I'm He's here to He's very much so needed, L- and he should be ashamed Lauren, of himself. And Lauren, I'm that's here to all tell it you. is to it. I don't know how big your, your, your purse string, I don't know how much you got in your bank account. Mm-hmm. I don't know any of that. It don't matter. <laughs> Let me tell you something. You got a young man, <laughs> 20, 30. My music, young man. With a lot of <laughs> <laughs> He's 33. Hey, even those young man. Come on now. Hey. With a lot of free time, a lot of money, and nothing to do, hey. That's going to be a problem. I, well, I don't know if it's going to be a problem, and then he oh, rest in is. peace, John Lewis. There, it could be a good problem for some. Mm. Hey, but. Not for the Clippers. You, 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 let me tell you something. Do you think that yes. um, George, Paul George yes. and Kawhi are upset? Like, I'll be mad. They should be mad, but I think they understand, too. Okay. Hey man, you gotta you gotta you gotta slow down. We're trying to win a championship. <laughs> hey man, I had to go get that lap dance. I had to. No. <laughs> uh-uh. Lauren. No, no. See, everybody's missing the point. Here's the point. Lauren. I hear you. What the hell is a strip club doing open in the first place during a <laughs> pandemic? <laughs> Hello? It's more That's important than Atlanta. it's more important than a church. Come on. <laughs> Are you sure? Yes. <laughs> That's the question I was. I said, wait a minute. Why is there a strip club open in the first place? See? I didn't see, but Lou Williams did. If That's you where to us as was in Atlanta. I'm like, maybe he got in trouble too. Weren't they in Atlanta? Hey. When he disappeared? <laughs> he disappeared, this is not all right. Good. She's Lauren Cox. He's the marvelous one, Dan Marver. It's Jerry Riles. This is the fastest hour in sports conversation. We had a special guest on tap, and unfortunately, uh, he's unavailable for us. But no worries. We keep rolling. We want you to roll with us. Our number here is 773-763-9278-773-763. WCPT. Morning World of Sports coming up right after this short time out. It's Gabe Salgado with our TR60 scoreboard update from home. Gabe, take it away, buddy. TR60 Sports Update. It's sponsored by the Monster Education Foundation. The White Sox complete the weekend sweep of the Kansas City Royals today by the score of 9-2. And not only did rookie Nick Madrigal get his first major league hit in Kansas City, he went 4-5 for five with an RBI and two runs scored as the Southsiders improved to 5-4 and four on the season. A walk-off RBI single by Javier Baez in the 11th inning gives the Cubs a 2-1 lead over the Pittsburgh Pirates to complete their weekend sweep at Wrigley Field today. Chris Bryant was not in the lineup as he was pulled from last night's start due to a stomach illness, but thankfully his COVID-19 test came back negative this morning. The NBA's restart continued today with Boston prevailing over Portland 128-124 to this afternoon. Orlando and Sacramento are getting underway, and Houston plays Milwaukee tonight. As the Blackhawks poured on the offense in their Game 1 playoff win over Edmonton on Saturday, rookie forward Dominic Kubelik set a new NHL record. He became the first player ever to record five points in his first career playoff game. Here's what Kubelik had to say about his milestone. Obviously, I felt really good. You know, everything went my way, so it's obviously it's nice, but uh, just the first game, so we got to keep going. Kubelik is a finalist for the Calder Trophy, and the puck will drop for Game 2 against the Oilers on Monday night. In today's NHL postseason slate, Boston handles Philadelphia 4-1 in the early game, and tonight has St. Louis take on Colorado, Columbus against Toronto, and Minnesota playing Vancouver. This update is sponsored by the Monster Education Foundation, MEF, empowering the next generation of leaders. Go to monstereducationfoundation.org to learn more. I am Gabe Salgado for the Rewind Sports 60 on WCPT 820 Chicago. the end of the quarter. Time for a break in the action. The hottest sports panel in Chicago will get back to the fast-paced action, streaming live on Facebook Live. We're back at it after this quick timeout, so don't you dare touch that iPhone, Android, iPad, Mac, or PC. Lock it in.
TheRewindSport60.com TheRewindSport60.com The Rewind Sport 60.com Relax Reset Rejuvenate Go to a link right now to restart your life The Rewind Sport 60.com what are you waiting for? Hope to see you soon. The Rewind Sport 60. Sport 60. If it's Chicago sports you want, you're in the right place. Hello, Chicago! The Rewind Sports 60. That's the best in the city of Chicago. Welcome back to the Rewind Sports 60 Live with the best sports panel in Chicago. Lock it in. Please welcome Matt Dumbo. I'd like to say thank you to all the fans watching at home and all the people making a positive difference in our world right now. We appreciate you. I know none of us need to be reminded about how our day-to-day -day lives have been affected by the outbreak of COVID-19. So I hope the Stanley Cup playoffs can bring a little normality and peace of mind during all these times of uncertainty. I'll transition topics to a topic that is very important to me my fellow members of the Hockey Diversity Alliance and the NHL. During this pandemic, something unexpected but long overdue occurred. The world woke up to the existence of systematic racism and how deeply rooted it is within our society. For those unaffected by systematic racism or unaware, I'm sure that some of you believe that this topic has garnered too much attention during the last couple months. But let me assure you, it is not. Racism is a man-made creation. 
and all it does is deteriorate from our collective prosperity. Racism is everywhere. Racism is everywhere. And, and we need to fight against it. On behalf of the NHL and the Hockey Diversity Alliance, we vow and promise to stand up for justice and fight for what is right. I know firsthand as a minority playing the great game of hockey, the unexplainable and difficult challenges that come with it. The Hockey Diversity Alliance and the NHL want kids to feel safe, comfortable and free-minded every time they enter an arena. So I stand in front of you today on behalf of those groups and promise you that we will fight against justice. We will fight against injustice and fight for what is right. I hope this inspires a new generation of hockey players and hockey fans because black lives matter. Breonna Taylor's life matters. Hockey is a great game, but it could be a whole lot greater. And it starts with all of us. Wow. Wow, Lauren. That was Minnesota's Matt Dumba on Saturday. He became the first NHL player to kneel in the U.S. National Anthem when he did so before the opening playoff game between the Oilers and the Blackhawks in Edmonton, Alberta. Dumba knelt at center ice while fellow black players Malcolm Subban of Chicago and Darnell Nurse of Edmonton each stood with a hand on one of his shoulders. Several teams this week stood together during the U.S. and Canadian Anthems with some players locking arms to show solidarity. With the message and racism on the video screens around him, the wild defenseman made a passionate speech about racial injustice on behalf of the league and the Hockey Diversity Alliance. Welcome back to the Rewind Sports 60. Yours truly, Jerry Riles, along with the marvelous one, Dan Marver, and the lovely, talented, outstanding Lauren Cox. I got to get your reaction, Lauren. And, of course, marvelous, but... I was, well, Lauren, your reaction once you heard the speech. Well, the speech, eh, I, I wasn't that touch moved and inspired by it. He said a couple of justices where it was supposed to be injustice. And I'm <laughs> like, ooh, I, yeah. But the overarching issue is um, on July 31st, mm -hmm. before this, Eric Trump praised the NHL players for not kneeling during the anthem. So they're already politicizing this. So, you know, I guess NHL decided let's scramble and do something. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, they have Dumba come. I know he's a part of the Diversity Council, mm -hmm. which, you know, it's only about four people on there. And <laughs> I just... I. I I feel like we need the right people delivering these messages. So you feel I he was the wrong it. person? I want to feel it. Why was, I he, wanna... why was he the wrong person? Because he was stumbling. On, he said it was injustice, and he said justice. I like, mean, that was the... Yeah, because he's reading something, and I don't feel his heart and soul in it. Really? And, no. And he is white and Filipino. Right. Where was the black person to say it? Or at least... A white person Next saying to him. it. <laughs> Subhan. Yeah. And no, well, he should have been talking. Somebody who could have really conveyed this message to that audience that mm -hmm. needs to hear it mm -hmm. because, you know, I mean, NHL and their right. diversity has always been a question, at least. Okay. Marvelous. Well, I mean, obviously it's not like the NBA in terms of the number of black players that participate in the sport. I thought that um, it was not shocking that they that, he, that Dumba spoke. Um, I thought that his remarks were okay and the, you know and, and whatnot and he's certainly again first amendment right to, to do whatever you want but i think the nhl felt that the that that was the appropriate thing to do uh, under all the circumstances i mean fight against injustice okay recognize injustice racism the, i've always said <laughs> 
we talked about solutions. You talked about a solution for, for the shootings in Chicago. What is the solution? I've actually offered legislative solutions to different things, but what is the solution? Because in people's minds, no matter what you do, there's still going to be bias. I mean, there's no way you can get rid of a bias in a person's head, unfortunately. But obviously, you don't want police killing people either. No, <laughs> so. you know, I think, I think, I think you can... Uh, uh, get away from a bias, and I, I, a lot of times I think it comes from um, a personal experience. I know that there have been um, stories over the years where there have been neo Nazis or skinheads, uh, you know, that hated, you know, anyone that wasn't like them. Uh, they had an experience or an encounter with a minority or a black person, and it kind of open up their eyes mm -hmm. to a whole new different world. I'll give you a, uh, a, a movie to look. Uh, American History X. American History X. With, uh, what's his name? Norton? Ed? Yeah. <laughs> Edward Norton? Yeah. American History X. If you haven't seen that movie, go out and get it. Get it on okay. Netflix. Get it. Whatever you have to do, watch American History X. It's it's an it's a fantastic movie. It, it's on Hulu. Thank you, uh, Devin Tango, for that. Uh, it's on Hulu. If you haven't seen that movie, watch that movie. And that character, his perspective on life changed because he had a personal experience. He went from one end of the spectrum as far as hate to the other end of the spectrum as far as caring and loving his fellow man absolutely but because he had a personal experience which changed his bias completely but go on get american history x you would you you oh my god what a movie it's it's a fantastic movie i i think lauren i agree with you that you know you want something to be from the heart you want the the, the real passion to come from it regardless of whatever the, the case may be right yeah in this situation black lives matter you, you you want someone who's going who's to express it. Black Lives yeah. Matter. Well, I, I mean, he, I, I have to disagree minority. with them because yeah. I think a conversation can change people's mm -hmm. mindsets. I've seen it happen. Oh, yeah. So that's why I really feel that they need to have the right people conveying this message because they had an audience. If it was some uh, a message delivered in a different way by a different person, Maybe that could have opened up the door for some people. I mean, the way, I mean, people were, oh, you know, oh, we, we're so happy that he said it. And, you know, this was such a great moment. But, you know, did it really land a certain way? Well, here's the deal. It, it's hard for you and I to answer that question because we are we are minorities. We're the reason this move part of the reason this movement is is at the heights that it is because of what's happened to us personally as african american men and, and and woman but also to the african american the black race over 400 years of oppression so we see it feel it and experience it differently but for those such as dan marver and and devin tingle who are not minorities or or, or, or black they see a whole. They see it through a different lens. Oh, sure. Here's the surprising yeah. thing: we talk about Juneteenth. You and I, we grew up knowing about Juneteenth, mm -hmm. but once it was, <laughs> once it was brought to the mainstream America, there were many people who are not African American or Black who had no idea about Juneteenth. Absolutely. So his his message, even though for us as minorities we kind of like, mm, you know, okay, thank you so much, but for the audience which is primarily white oh, and white. foreign, mm -hmm. right? Now, I'm going to say primarily white and foreign. Mm -hmm. uh, those were words that needed to be said and heard to be that eye-opener, so to speak. Marvelous, you, uh, you've been... A couple, you know, couple points. You can't see it visually, but I am a minority. Number two, you have to remember that the majority of players that play in the NHL are from Canada. That's another big difference. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so... No, but I mean, as 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 being, uh, well, you are. You're Jewish, is that okay? Yeah. Right. You're not African American or or a person of color. Mm -hmm. You've experienced some sort of racism or or some sort of uh, prejudice. Uh, but if you're walking down the street with Lauren and, and I, <laughs> you you you're not going to be mistaken as being a minority. Yeah, clearly. But I. But I. Until but, you uh, express or or share. 
right? That. Mm-hmm. And that and that's the big difference. But being non black, yeah. brown, when you heard the message, mm-hmm. did it did it enlighten you in any way? Did it I mean, the, did, did it did the, it touch you in any the, way? The NHL, this message we're talking about? Yes. No, it didn't I mean it was I didn't find it compelling. I mean, I found I found I mean Kaepernick would be more compelling, for example. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, I mean so, if, so they have that, but on the other, but I exactly. think that it was I don't know yeah, it might have been that the NHL and it was it was behind this. I mean, he's I mean whether he's a good actor or not, his voice sort of trembled a little bit. So I mean, I guess well, he's, he's nervous. nervous. Right. Yeah, <laughs> he's, he's nervous. Right. He's mixing Here's up justice deal. with injustice. It's like yeah. come on, and he did like two. It wasn't that I'm not nitpicking, but I'm saying. You could tell he was reading a statement versus a black person is really right. experienced that, which right. probably was right. Malcolm Subain right next to right. him. You know, right. so right. that I right. just that that kind of I mean, threw me off. I, I've been told that there are, however, some physical features that do identify Jewish people. Yeah, there certainly are. We understand yeah. that, but here's the deal. I I think that because of the audience again, Lauren, and and because of the league, um, this is something that's unprecedented for you know a minority to speak out. Uh, you know, uh, and Neil. I didn't when you first sent me the clip. I didn't know that he kneeled, and so when he when I saw him kneeling, I mm-hmm. said, you know, I, I definitely respect that. But you know, my issue still stands in terms of they well, should have had a black person. I'm glad that he did it. That I'm I'm glad that he did it. I I'm glad that the NHL is on the forefront as far as you know uh, making change and bringing more equality. Are they really, or is this okay. just well, what the, everybody's well, yeah. doing? Well, that's that's the, what that's, kind of change? <laughs> that's the great that's the great question. That's the great question. Why they throw him up there with that speech that they gave <laughs> him? It's like. They like, had to do something. I mean, yeah. I, I so you're say. saying he was a, a token representative well, of the National Hockey League? Is that what you're that. saying? No, I didn't I, say that. I, mean, I, just said I, I, I thought of that. Or somebody else. I thought of that. Well, here's the thing. It didn't touch Dan, so we ain't doing a good job. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I, right, that, right. that particular one, there are others, but not, not him. Yeah, let's <laughs> let's go out to our phone lines. Tommy calling from Chicago is joining us on the Rewind Sports 60. Tommy, how are you, man? Are you there? First of all, you know, uh, yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me, sir? No, there you go. You What's going on, Tommy? How are you? Okay, okay. V- very quickly, you know, uh, I tune in to you guys now because I really enjoy the satire between the three of you and the chemistry and also the information about sports. But let's be clear about one thing. There are certain conversations that we should not even embark on or get into because it's a broken record. Ever had that song that you liked very well until it got to that same point and then it just got stuck? <laughs> so what difference does it make if you kneel and when you stand up, it's still the same thing? The bottom line to where we are right now is simple. We're in a world health crisis. And that alone would bring morality back to the conscious mind of any hater to recognize and understand that, well, wait a minute, I hate this, this color so bad. But guess what? I can die from the same thing, too. So my point on all of this is pretty simple. You want to stop all this stuff? Cut it out. That's all you got to do. But the reason why you won't cut it out is because then you have to repair what you've done. And so one last thing. I was watching the the Lakers and the Raptors, and and really, guys, I I don't know how long it's going to take me to get used to all of this, man. But I'm just like, 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 really? I mean, I, I, it's it's like the the whole camaraderie of the game where the the people could spur the the underdog on or or give that team that was down that spark to come back and stuff. It's just like now, man. It's just like watching some guys play pickup ball in, in a gym, except for they all neatly dressed in NBA uniforms. Yeah, I don't I don't mind that. Oh, I love you guys. Hey, real quick before you go, you Tommy. Thank you so much. We yes, appreciate sir. you and we love you too. Real quick before you go, and you're, you're a lifelong Chicagoan. What side of town you grew up on? I grew up on the South Side. Okay, South Side. So you, one of the most famous playgrounds in Chicago basketball history is Cole Park. All the basketball, right. all the basketball legends, they played at Cole Park because that's you where you go. To showcase your talents, and you say, "Hey, man, I can hang with the boys." You know how many people would stand at Cole Park all day long and watch the Hoopers come and go, come and go, come and go. That's what we're watching with this this NBA hub down in Orlando. They don't have people in the stands; they got the the virtual screen or whatever. But 
Basketball fans are watching these hoopers because they're the best in the world. And so I I would hope that you would embrace that from a pure basketball wait, standpoint. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Let, let, let me try to help you out. Yes, sir. See, the, the, see the, uh, on, on the west side, there was a little gymnasium called the Boys Club. Mm-hmm. Where, all the, uh, where all the elites went all throughout the city, southwest. If you were a baller, you, you know where all these places were. There's one right over behind the Museum of Science and Industry where they all went. Right. But let me just try to be clear about one thing. See, first of all, because we as moral-minded people have not stopped and said there's something that's really, really wrong, that thousands of uh, thousands of people are dying, and maybe we just need to pause for a moment and straighten that out. We seem to believe and think we can just go on on about our lives and then it's, and then come up with a new narrative. Well, this is the new this, this is the new that. The whole camaraderie of sports, as you said, was the ability to go and watch these guys. When I see them now, I, I, I see all of these slogans and I see all of this stuff and I say to myself, man, really, seriously, guys, if we want to stop what's going on, then first of all, you have to do what Michael Jackson said and be the person that looks in the mirror. And second of all, you have to recognize and understand and stop lying to yourself and try to act like because you're not black that you don't know what's going on. Yeah. And again, I love you guys, and I tune in every Sunday, and, and, and thank you for letting me get that out. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you, and uh, don't be a stranger, but you certainly are. I was going to ask Tommy, when he, did you understand the cut it out part? I, I kind of... Well, didn't, couldn't follow that. Yeah, I mean, he, he, he cut it out means stop it. Stop, stop what? <laughs> stop the, stop the, well, I think he's saying, stop trying to put, and no pun intended, but stop trying to put a mask on something that, uh-huh. you know, you're covering up the reality of life, of where, where we are okay. today. Mm-hmm. So I think with the NBA, I think with sports in general, we're, we're trying to get to, back to our normal way of life. And by starting these games up, and we see how they're falling to the wayside, it's similar to putting a mask on to pretend that there's nothing real happening in this world. And I think that's what he means, say, hey, cut it out. A distraction, maybe? It, it's, yeah, it's exactly. It's a distraction. So he said, hey, stop it. Stop let's the, get let's let's address the issue. So stop, if I have a broken arm, stop the games. I mean, yeah, I mean, okay. he 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 wants to stop everything and say, okay. hey, let's focus on life and take and get past this thing before we get back to try fun and games, more okay. or less. In okay. my opinion, the way I interpret it, okay. is that what you see? Well, absolutely. And and the whole thing is money. <laughs> this yeah. is what this is all about. Yeah. They're not, you know, oh, the sports bring everybody together. Right. No, it's economic. It doesn't matter how many people in the stands. It's the TV. <laughs> and the advertising. Right. right, exactly. So, I mean, that that's all it is. And, you know, I do definitely agree in terms of we definitely need to stay focused. We got to stay I think focused. the problem is, he said, cut it out. Unlike Michael Jackson and the man in the mirror, I think the big problem is, it's at the end of the day, it's fear. I, I think it's a human nature. It's fear of the unknown. And that's where we are. And that's why some people embrace it and they accept it and they, they welcome it. Other people, they try to run and scatter from it because fear is a, it's a, it's a, powerful, a powerful emotion. And it could be manipulated and manipulate people. And I think that's where we are. And that's why we're distracted and scrambling because of fear. Lauren, you're, we didn't get to the three... Oh Keys. God. Yes. You got it real quick? Well, I mean, we we talked about but basically most of it, the NFL. Uh, a bunch of players, a half dozen of the Patriots basically are opting out. Uh, Eddie Goldman, Bears defense, essentially, yes. um, opted out as well. So eager to see how all of this is going to unfold, unfold with the NFL. But we see what ha- what's happening with the NFL. We'll get it more next week. My apologies. Marvelous. Yeah, I just wanted to remind everybody, don't go to high school football games in four weeks. They're not going to play till March. <laughs> yeah, they'll be in March. <laughs> thanks yeah. to Devin Tingle, our producer, outstanding producer. Thanks to both of you, and thanks to our callers. This is the fastest hour in sports conversation. It is the Rewind Sports 60. Gabe Sogato, TR60 scoreboard update. Take it away, buddy. TR60 sports update.
It's been a newsworthy week for the Bears as they prepare to head into their second week of this year's modified training camp. Earlier this week, nose tackle Eddie Goldman chose to opt out of this season due to concerns over the coronavirus pandemic. And since then, three players in the form of defensive lineman John Jenkins, running back Artavius Pierce, and tight end Eric Saubert have been placed on the league's COVID-19 test because they either tested positive or they are quarantining due to potential exposure to the virus. This update is sponsored by the Monster Education Foundation. I am Gabe Salgado, and this is the Rewind Sports 60 on WCPT 820 Chicago. The Rewind Sport sixty dot com. Relax. Reset. Rejuvenate. Go to a link right now to restart your life. The Rewind Sport sixty dot com. What are you waiting for? Hope to see you soon. The Rewind Sport 60. Sports 60. 